Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Tom Nelson and this is part one of how homeostasis works. It's a large series on the process of homeostasis. So how does homeostasis work? Everything you come in contact uh, is constantly acting on your body. Many things in your life are capable of altering many internal functions that could easily go out of their acceptable normal range and that could have devastating effects. So homeostasis acts like the thermostat that you have in your home. You set the thermostat to the desired temperature you want, and it maintains that temperature within a very narrow range, usually within a degree or so. So homeostasis is kind of like that thermostat. It keeps things working inside your body within very specific set limits that are set by nature, by your genes. And those limits are called set points. So your body is equipped with special sensors, each specially designed to monitor one specific thing, like your blood sugar or your temperature, that constantly signal your brain whenever changes are occurring. Your brain then compares those signals with the set points that are set by your genes in nature, and then, as necessary, will make corrections to keep your system in balance, to maintain your body functioning within those set points. So again, Many diseases are a direct result of a disturbance of homeostasis, known as homeostatic imbalance. So diabetes is the result of imbalances in homeostasis. Your body loses its ability to control its blood sugars, its blood pressure, and sometimes cholesterol. So as your body ages, it will lose efficiency due to changes in control system, changes that your environment slowly causes changes in your set points and it can impact your health over time. So homeostatic inefficiencies gradually result in an unstable internal environment, and that increases the risk for various health issues. So many environmental, dietary, lifestyle, emotional, and numerous other stimuli that are working on you every single day can slowly reprogram your set points to a less than healthy level. So the set points shift upward or downward, and your body loses its ability to maintain a truly healthy balance. So you're going to recall that a bad diet directly impacts, it changes your genetic makeup, and that could be all it takes. A bad diet causes changes in the amino acids that are produced, and consequently, the number and type of enzymes and hormones that are produced from those amino acids. So those changes result in a decline in cellular function and health because those amino acids, hormones, and enzymes are extremely important to the running of each and every one of your 37 trillion cells and keeping them operating at a healthy, optimal level. So the result is a slow, methodical change in your homeostasis as well. So your brain adjusts to managing the new set points that have been established. Originally, when you were born, nature had set all your set points at levels that optimized perfect health. That is, unless a genetic mutation had occurred in your mother that was transferred and it transferred erroneous information. So a homeostatic imbalance is responsible for the physical changes associated with aging. Heart failure can be caused because nominal negative feedback mechanisms become overwhelmed and destructive positive feedback mechanisms begin to take over. So the set points are reset to unhealthy levels and your brain dutifully uh, maintains the wrong levels. So when you eat a diet made up of processed foods, pretty much anything in a box, bag, can, or a bottle that has ingredients that you can't spell or pronounce, then uh, that or high glycemic index foods, wheat, dairy, saturated fats, uh, vegetable oils, artificial sweeteners, caffeine, sodas and colas, pork and alcohol, all which is the normal diet for many diabetics today, your body is challenged each and every time you eat it, numerous times every single day, every time you sit down to eat one of those items. So those pro-oxidant substances, those substances which cause inflammation, cause massive amounts of inflammation throughout your body. And it can become chronic, it can, which means that it can continue to run uncontrolled for long periods of time and cause significant damage. So the chemicals and undesirable substances 
that alter your body's genetic response to what you eat and can it slowly alter the types and quantities of amino acids, enzymes, and hormones that each one of your body's cells produce. So a diet low in antioxidants is going to cause a loss of control over the destructive inflammation because it's antioxidants that stop inflammation. So you're going to recall that everything you eat impacts your genes throughout your body, all 37 trillion cells. And you actually are then what you eat. So when you eat a processed food that contains only chemical additives, food coloring, texture enhancers, flavor enhancers, uh, processed sugar, processed salt, uh, trace amounts of pesticides, fungicides, and chemical fertilizers, feedlot meats that have a lack of proper enzymes and amino acids and growth hormones, food coloring, nitrates, nitrates, and antibiotics that are added to those feedlot meats through their feed, all of those chemicals are going to enter your body every time you eat a meal that contains them. And so they will come in direct contact with your body's genes. So a good diet causes a favorable response throughout your entire body, every single cell. And when you eat a bad diet, those chemicals are capable of causing your genes to flip switches that can very adversely affect how your body responds throughout your body. And because those chemicals come in direct contact with your genes, you will also recall that your genes are located in every cell of your body in the control center, in City Hall. So it will affect every single one of the cells in your body. So each of those genes through City Hall communicates every change that they encounter with the other genes throughout every cell in your body. So when you eat broccoli, for example, the broccoli actually causes a very positive genetic response, and that is communicated to all of the other genes in your body, every single living cell. And those changes in genetic makeup are a slow process, but as far as broccoli, it can be a very positive one. But if it's not a positive reaction, it can be a permanent, if not sustained, uh, change in your genes once those gene switches are flipped. So this process played a primary role in your becoming a diabetic. Our environment is also a very powerful stimulator. The temperature outside your body, the humidity, the air pollution, chemicals in your drinking water, chemicals from plastics, plastic bottles, soaps, shampoos, toothpaste, mouthwash, laundry soaps, dish soaps, cigarette smoke, first, second, and third hand, and many, many other stimulators in your environment are there every single day. They're acting on your body every single day, and they're just a part of your daily life. So your body's going to absorb those chemicals, and it's going to react to its environment with the same effect. So now go to homeostasis part two. You're going to learn about blood type and homeostasis. Thank you for watching this video and please pay it forward. Thank you so very much.